Hey everyone, it is Brian Kaz, and I'll soon be joined by my friend and, and business partner, Sean, Sean Casey. Uh, if you're here and you can uh, hear my voice and see my screen, which is just essentially PowerPoint, uh, just say a quick yes, just so I know I'm not talking to myself. All right, uh, well, lots of yeses, some loud and clears. All right, good, good, good. Um, so on this call here, we'll basically be talking about why your business might suck and how to fix it. Now, obviously, don't take this as like a personal plan. We're not saying that yours specifically sucks, but um, if you're finding that you're not getting the results that you want, or even if you're, you know, even if you have a pretty good business to start with, but you're not quite able to basically grow as much as you, you want, um, on this call, we'll basically focus on you know what those issues are and how to fix them because a lot of businesses that basically you know essentially suck or need some some help uh, tend to have one or more um, of these things wrong. And luckily, uh, they're not actually terribly hard um, to to fix, and that's what makes this um, I, I think a really important and worthwhile call there. So without further ado, we'll get this show on the road with uh, why, why your business sucks and how to fix it. And once again, my name is Brian Kaz. Now, as most of you know, we have these calls every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, which is right about now, uh, where we'll have a live training and or Q&A call for our members. Uh, you'll also get a reminder each week so you don't for, forget. Um, but if by chance you miss one, uh, we'll have them up usually within a day under the training tab on the left side nav navigation bar. So you would click on the training, then you click on the Wednesday calls, and you see the most recent ones at the very top. So this one you'll see there either by the end of the day today or probably by midday to tomorrow at the latest. And you can also search uh, through um, all, all the past calls as well. So if there's a topic of interest to you, uh, we have a search bar for that there. And first, I have a Quick question for for you all, um, just because I want to get um, kind of a better idea of where you, you're, you're all at, and you know how how we can better help you, and so on. And the question I had um, is this: that this is the first one, and, and you, you can type a one, two, three, or four in the chat box. So, which of the following best describes you? You can type in a one if you don't have any product, service, site, or offer, or you know. Basically, you have nothing now um, in terms of like a business or especially an online side. You can type in a two if you have something but haven't done much to promote it yet. So maybe you have a site but you haven't done much to pr promote it, or maybe you have an offer or a product but you just haven't taken the next step um, to, to basically start promoting it. Or you can type in a three if you have something, whether it be a product, a service, an offer, a site, um, and it's making at least some money online. So if you're making at least something not like full-time or anything but at least you're making something you can type in a three and then you can type in a four if you make a full-time or better living off your business so if your main thing or your only thing um you know is is your business you can type in a four for that so that this this just kind of helps us get a better idea of who you all are so, so we can kind of basically tailor our trainings um to kind of uh, fit that um, a bit more uh, for you guys there. All right, so and so far I'm seeing a good mix um, of responses as well, so that's always good there, but we'll uh, do a tally of it uh, later and see um, what we can do to maybe uh, kind of tweak some, some of the trainings to basically better target uh, the needs and stuff um, that you guys uh, have as well, um, and I actually have another question that um, I didn't write down yet, but you can basically, um, you can also respond with a five, six, or a seven. So here's the question I have, and it's um, which of these products or which of the tools, I should say, which, which of the tools are more appealing to you? Um, so I'll first tell you what the three ones are, and then, um, I'll tell you which is five, six, or seven to make it easy. So the first one is a tool that finds leads of basically any kind of business out there. So if you want leads, leads of dentists or anything 
like that. You can get their email, you can get their address and phone um, and, and all that. So it's basically a tool to find leads. The second one is a tool to make your SEO even easier where um, basically you type in a keyword you're trying to rank for, you type in your site, and it basically takes care of all the issues for, for you right there. So if that sounds more exciting to you, and I know we have some tools that do a lot of that stuff, I'm just trying to see which ones are more exciting uh, to, to you. And third and lastly would be something that helps you instantly um, make a site and get some content and, and, and get some content and stuff up there. So you can type in a five if you think the most interesting one of those three would be a tool to find business leads. You can type in a six if you if you think the more interesting one is a tool that instantly and automatically fixes your SEO issues to help you rank. And you can type in a seven um, if you think that the more interesting tool um, would be one to actually help you um, kind of make and monetize a site to have like pre-existing content and stuff on it. So you can either type in uh, uh, five, six, or seven uh, based upon that. That just gives us a, an idea of how to possibly tweak some tools and web fire and um, stuff like that just to see where most of your interest um, would be right there. All right. All right. Cool, cool. All right, and as a side note too, we have our free Facebook group at getwebfire.com forward slash FB group. If you're not a free member of that yet, you can go to that link right there. We'll forward you to the Facebook group. Just click on the join. Um, if you do so now, Sharon will probably prove you within like a minute or two or so. And, and then towards the end of this call, if you're a free member of that group, uh, you'll have a chance to um, win $100 live at the end of this call right here. So make sure you go, you go to getwebfire.com forward slash FB group. Now, let's move on to our training for this week on why your business sucks and how to fix it. And as a side note, um, before we jump in, I greatly appreciate you know all the feedback you guys gave. I greatly, greatly appreciate those that took a second to basically answer uh, those questions for us as well. So that's greatly appreciated. All right. So here's the overview for today. First, we'll basically talk about why your business sucks and how to fix it. Then we'll have our Q&A if you have any other questions, whether it be related to this topic or anything else. And then we'll do the cash giveaway to end that up um, right there. And just as another side, side note, um, I, I know we made an announcement of this last week, but um, uh, several days back, uh, there was the daylight savings time. So uh, make sure that you basically always check to, to, to see what 2 p.m. Eastern is. Now, on GoToWebinar, when you get a notice, it should alert you to like what the time is and stuff by you. But just in case, know that we always have it at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so always be on uh, Wednesday. So it will always be at that time uh, right there. So I know there's a couple countries that um, the daylight savings, there's like a week or two where um, it's a little off until yours, you know, will change too, but uh, just thought I'd make that announcement again. Now, moving on to reasons why your business might suck. And there's several reasons. So we'll go through several of these right there and what you can do. So first, number one is your offer sucks or isn't relevant. So do you have an offer? Um, or maybe you've done some research but have zero re results. If so, there's a good chance that your offer just might suck, and that's okay. Now, have you? I mean, at least it's okay to start with as long as you fix that. Now, have you done research to see if others are selling similar things to you? Um, and oftentimes, I find like people have an idea for like an out there topic or an out there offer and they haven't really done the research to see if there's a market for it um, which you know if it's super easy to make a product or an offer great um, you know if you want to test it just for the heck, 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 heck of it super easy doesn't cost you anything great but if it takes a lot of time or costs a lot of money 
you know, you don't want to spend six months and like $30,000 to test out an idea um, if you have no clue if it will work or not. That's, you know, that can be a huge waste and not all that fun um, if it does not work. Um, and more often than not, you'll find, you know, a lot of ideas, a lot of offers sometimes just don't work. Um, so it's best to kind of find a quick way to fail and a quick way to see, hey, what works and what does not work. And one of the easiest things out there is to spy on others, you know, see what they're doing, uh, see what, what they're talking about, what they're advertising. There's a few things that you can, can do. Uh, one of the easiest things is you can either um, basically just join some relevant um, gr groups on stuff on Facebook related to the niche that, that you're in, and then just watch your feed for basically Facebook ads and see which ones have like a lot of comments or like a lot of views and stuff like that. Cause that will give you an idea that, Hey, if someone's paying for a lot of ads, chances are, you know, if they're smart, they're probably getting some money off of that. Um, so it can be a good way to kind of research to see, Hey, what appears to be working? Um, what is it about that actual offer? Then once you see it, maybe sign up if it's a free opt-in, see what their upsells are and stuff like that, just to give you kind of a better idea uh, of what's what there. Um, and on the Google side, you can do a Google search for several terms related to your, to your niche and see who pays for ads there. And just kind of do some research search to see what those offers are, uh, sign up, see if there's any upsells, uh, maybe check like forums and comments and stuff and just to see what people are talking about and see what people are excited about and as easy as it is i mean you can do like a basic amount of research in like a couple minutes if you want to do like a lot more more in depth you can get a lot of info basically taking like 10 minutes of your your time and trying to dive deep and see what their emails are see see what their upsells are and all that and as easy as that is and as much useful info as, as that can provide a lot of people never take the time to do that um like sean and i are, are, are in a handful of niches and you know when we try to create a pot up you know a product or create like a new funnel path and stuff we don't just usually ran randomly say oh hey let's try like these 50 different things and see what sticks sure we might sometimes have an occasional idea that we're like hey you know we have a hunch that this might do well um and when we can test that but more often than not it's like hey here's a bunch of competitors and they all seem to be selling something like this. So maybe we should have something like that too um, and see how that works. Um, and you can get a lot of info and that can give you a pretty good idea right there. You also wanna make sure like, and ask your, your, yourself, are you making your offer way too co complex and not dumbing it down? And I find a lot of people are very, very guilty of this. And what, what I mean by it is, they're explaining that their offer way too much in technical terms like um you know like oftentimes like let's say you're trying to sell an seo service and let's say you sell it by saying hey i'll get you x amount of backlinks i'll edit your title tags i'll add a schema i'll do this 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 and that guess what 99 percent of that is going right over your prospects heads meanwhile if there's a guy that just says hey I'll get you to show up on the front page of Google like this. That's a much easier message. It's a simpler one. Um, and, you know, someone like you might say, well, wait, that's not fair. They never really said what they include in that service. It doesn't matter because, you know, the message is received much better by the viewers, by their prospects. So you might want to um, try to dumb down your offer and really focus on the benefits more than the technicalities of everything. Um, it's kind of like, you know, if you're selling a car to someone that doesn't understand cars, you don't want to talk about like all the technicalities of, of the car and, you know, all the stuff like that versus just saying, hey, it's super roomy, super cool and drives fast. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it just is much easier to, to explain. Now, if you're explaining to someone on the level of, of, of you, sure, you can be more technical and stuff like that, but nine times out of 10, you're not trying to target those people. You're trying to target the uh, ones that don't know as much as you, who you can help a lot, but don't understand the technicality. So always make sure to kind of dumb down your offer as much as possible. 
The other thing is, are you not offering any social proof and just expect people to just magically buy? Um, for instance, you know, if you were to say, um, you know, hey, um, I'll get you on page one of Google and you have a buy now link for let's say a thousand dollars and you offer like no social proof or anything, unless like people actually know you, which you know they do great. Um, but if they don't know know you, they don't know you know any clients of yours or anything like like that. It's very hard to get a person to trust you, especially for like a thousand dollar price point. Now, if it's like you know a cheap thing, like an impulse buy on, under like the twenty buck range, sure, you don't need as much social proof in that case. Um, but if you're selling especially high ticket stuff, you absolutely need the social proof. Now, this can take the the form of um, examples you have where maybe using the the seo example maybe you have a couple examples where you've gotten stuff ranked maybe we have a testimonial um from a client or two um or maybe you know if you don't have any of that if you're brand new you can just get the social proof by explaining why some sites rank and why some don't like if you show like a screenshot of google and say hey you see these three sites rank at 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 the top here and look they all have this in common they all have a title tag they all have a schema or they all have whatever whereas these sites at the bottom or on page two you can see they don't have the keywords in the titles they don't ha have this that social proof right there even if it's not your own clients you're showing social proof that you know what you're talking about and that can buy a lot of respect and get a lot of people to open their wallets to you and i see a lot of people just make an offer out there and don't have any social proof it's it's like saying hey you know i'll train you to have a better golf swim and be you know basically twice as good at golf but i give you no social proof as to you know what i know how i know anyone i've ever worked with you know you'd be hesitant um especially in my case because i don't golf so i'd probably be the last one you want to buy from and that's kind of the fear that a lot of people have they're like does this guy know what he's talking about meanwhile you know if you're like um hey i'm you know a top trainer i've worked here for x amount, amount of years i have um i do i've coached uh so and so and so and so or i've uh, gotten like two youth youth champ cha championships or i've helped coached two youth champ champions or anything like that it sounds a lot more impressive and and then if you or on the flip side if you're like hey here's one or two tips that can help a great deal here's what the average instructor will teach you this is wrong here's what you do instead try this and see and when they try it and get a good re result they're like wow this guy knows what, what he's talking about i want to buy uh from him um the other thing is is your offer not relevant to your target market so oftentimes i find uh people are trying to target a market that just doesn't really want their offer and this can be for like a bunch of reasons like it could be like maybe you're trying to sell um you know like a thousand dollar um seo service uh to a place that like barely does anything on on online and barely has a budget um so it's, it's not really relevant to your market or you know maybe um like in the case of a golfer maybe you're trying to target like anyone who likes golf versus like um the more intermediate to advanced guys who probably want to improve their game versus just like the average golfer that just basically golfs like you know once in a blue moon and doesn't really care to improve much um, another example is oftentimes i find um people tend to um have either you know too specific of of an offer with a broad audience or too broad of an offer with a specific audience. For instance, um, if you have an ebook on how to lose chin fat, okay, a lot of times people try to target anyone that wants to lose weight. And the problem is anyone that wants to, to lose weight isn't necessarily interested in how to lose chin fat. People that want to lose chin fat are probably specifically looking for a solution to how to lose ch chin fat. So here's, here's a perfect example. Let's say there's two books out there. Okay, and one book is seven dollars and three hundred pages long. So it's seven dollars, three hundred pa pages long, and it's all about weight loss. And it even includes a section on how to lose fat around the face and the chin. Okay, so seven dollars, three hundred pages long. The next book is specifically how to lose chin fat, 
and it's only 30 pages long, okay? But it sold for $27 instead of $7. If you're looking to lose chin fat, okay, and you see both those books, which one are you more likely to buy? The $27 book on just how to lose ch chin fat or the $7 much longer book on how to lose weight, including a section on chin fat? Well, ironically enough, the vast majority of people will pay a lot more to have the book just on chin fat, even though it's a shorter book. And even though the longer book probably has just as much info, if not way more, they'd rather buy or that they'd rather pay more to have a specific solution to their needs that they know will be met in that book. So if you have a specific offer, make sure you target a specific audience. And likewise, if you have a broad offer, don't think you can necessarily um, easily attract a broad audience. Uh, oftentimes it's easier to have a specific offer and target a specific crowd much easier than it is to go broad. And remember, even, even if you don't have an offer now, you can easily make one or work with existing service or offer pro providers. So there's really no excuse. Like, um, like if you wanna offer like a ranking or like an SEO service, you can either do something like use Webfire to help you do that, or you can find service providers out there that do the service you want to sell, make a deal with them to sell basically their service as your own and use them as like an outsource team. Um, so there's really like no excuse to not have an offer, especially when it's so easy to find offers and products out there that you can white label and call, call your own and mark up and kind of like fix up their sales process and their sales, sales pages and stuff like that. We've had lots of prior trainings on how to do that and how to charge like 10 to 100 times more than the competition, even for services or for offers that aren't yours. Um, so there's really no excuse not to have one. You just have to take action on it. Now, moving on to number two. So the second thing that uh, can be why your business might suck is that you don't have a good front end, a tripwire, or an opt-in offer. So every business needs a good front end or tripwire offer as well as an opt-in offer. These are offers to get people into your business funnel or to at least express an interest in it. So a front end offer is like any offer you have that they first see and anything they see past that would be like a back end offer or, or, or like an upsell. Whereas a tripwire is like something cheap and like an impulse buy to kind of get them in. And then, you know, you sell more stuff later and an opt in of obviously could be anything like, um, you know, like something for free to get them just to opt in. Um, if you want buyers, you can try a no-brainer or essentially cheap, cheap deal with a ton of value to get your foot in the door. So these are the kind of things where it's like, it's so cheap and the value is so high that your prospect would be dumb not to get it. That's the kind of offer that you want, um, where maybe others are charging for it, they can go with you and get it for, for free or not, not, not necessarily free, but for essentially cheap. Like maybe let's say, let's say, um, let's say you're in the dog niche, okay? And you sell all sorts of dog stuff, ranging from dog toys and dog food and um, dog houses and you know, all sorts of stuff like that. And let's say you have stuff that ranges from like, you know, a few bucks up to thousands of dollars. You know, it's very hard to go out and advertise a custom dog house that looks like your own house for like ten thousand dollars, okay? <laughs> um, and I've seen those. I think they're hilarious. They're like um, actual dog homes that look almost exactly like a real house. Um, you know, they're cool and all that, but it's very hard to find the right buyer there. Um, and it's very hard to advertise that and make a profit off of most of those. Um, but what you can do, and it's it's also hard to like even sell like let's say a fifty dollar dog toy. And get like a lot of buyers off that because you, you want to have like a no-brainer deal so what you could do is um maybe have like maybe there's a dog collar that is like a light up one like i i, I have a couple uh, a couple neighbors that walk their their dogs and they have like a collar that um lights up like one has like a neon pink one i think there's a neon green one too and they're they're pretty cool and when you're driving late at night it's impossible to miss um and it's, it's a practical thing, you know, if you take your dog for, for a walk at night, you don't want them or yourself to, to be hit. 
Um, so, you know, it, it, it makes sense. And instead of like selling it for, you know, like, let's say, let's say those only cost you like a couple bucks in raw cost, instead of trying to sell it for basically $20, which would make you a good profit, but would be very hard to kind of, kind of like get a bunch of sales in as like an impulse buy. Um, you could have it be like free plus $5 for shipping and handling where you can make a little dough on the front and off that, um, or, or if you run some paid ads, you could hope to break, break even, or at least get, you know, somewhat close there. Um, but the whole idea is they'd say, wow, I can get this for, for free. Wow. I only have to pay the five bucks to, 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 to ship. That's a pretty good deal there. And they'll jump on that because if they go to a store, they might see that, hey, I've seen ones like that that are like 20 to $30, but I can get this for like free plus five bucks to a ship. That's an awesome deal. Um, or maybe, um, you know, you have some software or something that others might charge for that you could give out for free that they're like, wow, this is a pretty good deal here. I'm going to sign up and get this for free. Or maybe you have, have an offer where, um, you know, let's say, let's say you're in the stock niche or the Forex niche or something like that. And you, you could offer say, Hey, I'll walk you through your first trade for free here. And I'll give you an instructional course too. Um, people might say, wow, that's a pretty awesome deal. He'll actually personally walk me through this for, for free. Now you can make money on the back end by having like an affiliate link where they sign up for like a certain broker or whatever, uh, right there. But the deal on the front is like a no brainer. It's like, wow, this is like such a cheap deal. I'm going to jump in on this. Um, so, you know, you, you want them to really see something that has a ton of value because the money you'll make on the back end on the other stuff that you sell them past that point. Now for an opt-in page for free leads, um, you want to have the offer be very clear, quick to understand and short and sweet. Um, because again, it's a free offer. Don't complicate it. I've seen guys that have like a free opt-in pa page offer and they'll have it be like, 10 pages long on why you should get this for free. Now, that might be okay if you're trying to sell them stuff, but if you're giving away for free, you, it shouldn't basically take you forever to explain it. You know, it's, it's kind of like um, if I offered you a free candy bar, okay? Um, I don't really have to explain much of it. I'll just say, hey, it's a free candy bar. And my guess is a lot of you would take it. But if I have like a 10 page long thing that explains every intricate detail of the candy bar, it starts to turn off a lot of you. Like you'll start to say, oh, wait, it has some caramel in it. Well, I don't really like that. So, you know, I, I might have to pass that. Oh, well, wait, wait, wait. It's milk chocolate instead of dark or dark chocolate instead of milk. Well, I, you know, I'm not sure if I really want that. Whereas if, if you just say, hey, it's a free can, candy bar, everyone's like, oh, it's free. Cool. Sign me up. Um, now, if you're selling it, like let's say, you know, you're selling s s something, especially a bit more expensive, you want to explain every detail of it. Like you want to say, or not every detail, but you know, you, you want to explain, hey, you know, it has some caramel in it, it has this, it has that, you know, because they, they, they want to have the reassurance that they're buying exactly what they want. Um, like no one's about to say, hey, um, you know, I'll pay a buck for a candy bar without knowing what the candy bar is. I mean, some might, but. Uh, a lot won't. Whereas if it's free, they won't care. So don't overcomplicate it. You also want to ask you, your, yourself like right now, or you want to brainstorm this as an exercise. So today I want you all to think of this and ask yourself what's something that you can give out for free or dirt cheap that people would go crazy over yet would be relevant to the other things that you could s sell them. Then research to see what others are doing as well. So that can be your home homework assignment is, you know, think of what can you give out for free or dirt cheap that others would, would go crazy over, yet would also be relevant to other stuff you could sell. So on, on, on the dog offer, you could almost give out those, you know, those, those LED collars for like, you know, free plus five bucks. And on the back end, you could sell them all sorts of other stuff related to dogs. Um, but that'd be kind of like a crazy offer that a lot of people would would like. And then again, research and see what others are doing um, on Facebook, on forums, you know, even, even, even on Amazon or AliExpress and see what sold and what is the popular stuff out there. So that's that's an assignment. It won't take you more than like, you know, 15 minutes to do all those. Um, but I think that will start to kind of get the, 
you know, get get the juices flowing and um, give you some ideas there. So uh, that will be a good assignment right there. So moving on to number three, the third reason why a lot of businesses uh, suck is that your funnel sucks or you don't even have one. This is a bigger issue than a lot of people realize. Do you sell any products or offers behind your main offer? If not, and often even if so, you should really examine how you can add additional upsells or backend offers to make more money from day one and beyond. You'll want a mix of low-end, high-end, and reoccurring opportunities um, you know, in any real funnel. Um, and you know, a couple examples are, you know, if it, like using the dog collar um, one, you know, you could have the, the LED be, be, be the front end where it's free plus the five bucks uh, for sh shipping and hand handling. Um, then maybe as an upsell, um, you could have like a low end offer of maybe let's let's say for like um, let's say for like ten or fifteen bucks, uh, you'll you'll include like um, you know, like two or three like a pack of two or three of different colors, um, or maybe you'll include like a custom dog tag that looks neat or something along those that, that end right there where it's a cheaper offer um, might be kind of cool and still relevant to the main offer or maybe you uh, have like hey for 10 or 15 bucks you'll have a light up leash instead of just like a collar that might look pretty neat and cool and a lot of guys might say oh wow that's a pretty neat then that looked very neat and for like 15 bucks or so it might say oh wow that's a very neat then and that's kind of still like an impulse buy um, and then you could also have some reoccurring and high-end opportunities in, in there as well. On the high-end side, like um, you, you could eventually even show off some like custom dog houses or um, like a like a oh, what's that called? Like like an automated uh, dog feeder or like water de device and stuff like that. Like anything that can be like from like fifty bucks to hundreds of dollars. Um, or or more that still would have like a cool effect. Uh, you can also look into reoccurring opportunities. Like maybe you have an offer where each month they get a new toy and a new treat. Like each month you ship them a new dog toy along with like a new small pack pack of treats. Um, and you, you you can say how this gives them more for variety and they really enjoy it. And you know it's a great way for like maybe for basically twenty nine to forty nine bucks bucks a month you can get a lot of people that you know really like dogs to join your sub subscription here and get extra stuff, um, you know, including maybe some um, extra tips and like training guides and stuff and uh, all sorts of stuff like uh, that. It's also super easy to create new offers, so keep that in mind too. Extra courses or info products or training web web webinars um, are all like, you know, fairly easy to kind of make on the, the fly as well as in, in, in interviews with uh, experts like using the dog example you could interview some expert tr trainers and stuff to kind of uh, have them kind of give some extra tips that a lot of people might re really enjoy um, you can also include some done for you services and stuff obviously with the dog one that might be a bit more hard if you're not there there in person but using like an SEO example you could have a service where you do all the work for for them where you help kind of rank their site um, and all that right there. Um, and keep in mind, like you don't necessarily have to be the one always doing the work yourself. You can find other services out there that you can outsource to and kind of just sell at a higher price for like a premium. Uh, you can also create software or look for existing software out there that you can either part partner with or resell um, as your own right there. Also, having the right funnel can drastically increase your sales and turn an okay or even bad business model into a great one. Because oftentimes the difference between losing money and making money basically comes with how good the back end funnel is. Um, and I find a lot of businesses tend not to, to have one. In fact, um, there's a guy I, uh, I, I know that's been in a business for, gosh, I wanna say like 30 plus years, if not like yeah, maybe even close to 40, a, a long time, several decades. And he was actually doing pretty good. Like he wasn't doing bad, but he was having issues 
growing the business. Like he wanted to do better. He wasn't bad, but he, he, he wanted to do better. He had a hand, handful of employees, but he wanted to really grow it larger. And, you know, he asked me one day how I thought he could better market his stuff and, you know, grow, grow his business. And one of the first things I said was, you know, hey, what all do, do, do you sell? What, what are your, your upsells? And I found out he really didn't have any upsells. Um, so we kind of brainstormed that a bit. And a couple of years later, I randomly talked to, to him and found out that he actually said that um, he used the advice that, that I gave him. And he was saying about two thirds of his sales now came directly just off of the upsell. So he actually grew his business um, by over two times by not adding a single client in just by, well, I mean, I'm sure he's added a bunch of sense, but um, by not having to market like essentially twice as much, just by having upsells there, he more than doubled his business, um, close to even tripling it. And he also said that was with him barely even like trying, like he, 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 he was saying, I'm sure if I sat down and spent more time you know, on the upsells, I could do even better, but that's with him barely trying, doubling or tripling his business. Um, you know, just by having upsells there. So you definitely want to be thinking um, of that right there because that can really turn a business over. Oftentimes, as I said, again, the difference between a successful business and a failing one is, you know, oftentimes entirely based on their funnel. Yet most businesses seem to neglect this. It's also the reason why, like, you know, um, if you don't be believe this, one thing that can really hit home, home on this is if you've ever seen an infomercial at, at night, they can have what appear to be some like really good deals where like you might get like a knife set for $19 or some weird stuff or, you know, not too much dough. And when you think about it, you're like, well, wait, you know, once you count the shipping and once you count all that stuff, you're like, you know, the and once you count like the raw cost of the product, you think, well, they're really not making that much dough. So how can they afford to pay for the TV, you know, for like the TV ad and all that. Well, reason is they offer upsells. If you call in, they're offering you upsells. They're trying to get you to buy more. Even if you don't buy anything then, they're advertising to you later and getting more money out of you. So the average buyer might be worth um, quite a bit more than what the, uh, the, the, the value or the prices that they're selling you on the TV. And most of the best infomercials out there have an awesome back end and that's how they get the majority of their money from that's how they can afford uh, to pay for the, the ads and all that now if you want a free tool that we previously given out a couple of times but because it's relevant to the stuff that i basically talked about right here uh, you can go to bizfire.com forward slash survey and take the business survey there then at the end of it once you're done with the survey you'll see a free sign up at the very top for a free funnel maker tool that lets you play around with potential funnels to see how much you could make uh, with some easy tweaks. So there's there's instructions and everything right there that lets you um, easily cr create new new funnels and kind of play around and see what that could be worth uh, to you. So I highly suggest you do that, especially if you're building like a new business or anything uh, like that, or you're wanting to tweak your existing business, definitely play around with that right there. It's a free tool, doesn't cost you anything. So just go to bizfire.com forward slash survey, take the survey right there. And then at the very end where it shows your re results, you'll see a free ad at the top for the funnel maker that you can sign up um, and get for free uh, right there. All right, moving on to number four of why your business might suck. It might be that your SEO or your rankings suck. So do you rank for some or most of the keywords that you think you should rank for? If not, most likely you need to look at your title tags and content um, to make sure uh, that the keywords that you're trying to rank for, um, you know, are essentially not only relevant um, to what, what you have, but make sure uh, that they actually contain the keyword in the title tags and, you know, um, in, in the description tags. Like there's a lot of people that say, hey, I, I want to rank for this key keyword or that phrase, but then nowhere will you see that phrase or that keyword in their title tag or in the, or 
in their dis description tag, which are two like super important places to have the keyword if you're trying to rank. And also have it obviously within the content um, you know, of, of your blog post or, or your web page or you know, your video title or wh whatever it might be um, uh, right, right uh, there. Um, and just you know, make sure that you know you target the titles well. Make sure you have not be only you know SEO friend friendly, but also uh, be compelling titles to click through. Like if you have, um, let's say, a keyword of like um, like a puppy potty tr training tricks. Don't just have that you know in your title. That could work okay, but instead you could say the easiest. The, the, the easiest or the best puppy potty tr tr train tricks dash five minute trick or like something like that where it gets some like basically interested to kind of click through right there. You also want to make sure that you use the SEO Inferno or take makers inside a web fire to, to help if you don't know how, how to change that stuff. You can also check your image alt takes too if you use images or our, um, or if you have like an e-commerce site, uh, where again the Take Maker or the SEO Inferno can help with that, um, and that's just like, you know, every image you have has like a name, and that just changes the the name to make it more relevant to what you're trying to rank for. And of course, you can also add schemas uh, to your sites as well. And th this is kind of like more information that you give Google um, about your site or about your business, and they can turn around and help you rank much easier for a lot of the stuff and show off your site uh, much more and show off more more information about your site which basically takes up more real estate and gives you more of a chance uh, to get ranked and get seen. You also can do some additional key, 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 keyword research by using Webfire's main keyword tool to find easy opportunities to rank for more keywords and then create new content to then rank for. You can then brainstorm questions or additional key keywords that your prospects might be searching for, create some content or videos for, for them that are optimized to rank for them, and make sure that you answer all of their common questions or searches to create a giant spider web to grab prospects. For instance, um, you know, if you're um, if you're let's say, um, you know, let's say you're selling diamonds online or you're an affiliate you know you can have a bunch of questions that you target as your key keywords and think of all the questions that a diamond buyer might look for and try to answer them um, try to have like a separate page or a separate video for all the possible questions with a clear answer and over time you're creating like a spider web like you're getting ranked for all these random things that can pull in the leads to you now it might take a little time to get all those but if you do even like one or two a week over time um, you know, it can start to kind of basically grab r r random prospects out there, kind of like a spider web. And if you have a good call to, to action and a good offer um, after you help them, you, you can kind of like reel them in to your main offer or, or, or your main site and start to grab sales off that way. You can get even better results by replicating the above, but on social media as well. So by distributing your content and videos and stuff in multiple places like on your blogs on YouTube or your other video type sites and social media you can kind of go the extra mile because again if, if you write a blog post there's no reason why you can't turn that into a video and submit the video on YouTube and there's no reason why you can't have you know the blog post or the video be on social media as well so you can kind of expand your spider web pretty easily that way and, and a lot of people oftentimes don't even do the basics here um, so make sure you definitely focus on that there. And last but not least, number five on why your business might suck, and it's that you want to actively market your offer and look for sources to get more traffic, leads, and sales. Um, so there's a lot of businesses that they'll create a site, or lots of people do all the, the, the work to get a site or an offer ready, but then they don't do anything to market it. Almost as though they're magically expecting people to just show up. You know, it's it's, it's kind of like, you know, if you have the best ice cream in the world and 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 you open the coolest looking ice cream shop in the middle of the desert, don't think like a lot of people are going to fly up and just like 
buy tons of ice cream off 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 you. If no one knows about you, um, they have no way of knowing that you have a good offer, that you have good ice cream or whatever it might be. So just because you build it, it doesn't mean that they'll come all by themselves. Um, I know there's a famous quote from uh, the movie, I think it's like Feel the Dreams or something where it's like, build it and they will come. That's not the case. <laughs> Very rarely can you just build something and people magically show up. If you do, you're incredibly lucky. Um, but, you know, again, people don't just show up by themselves. You have to do something to get them there. And there's a lot of people that take the initial step and that they're like, well, I haven't made any sales yet. It's like, well, what have you done to market it? And you get like a blank stare, like nothing. I'm like, okay. So it's kind of like saying, hey, you know, I'm. it's like, imagine if you had something for sale in your house and you're like, man, I'm going to sell my chair. I'm not going to post an ad for it. I'm not even going to post it outside with a sign. I'm, I'm just going to hope that someone will magically walk up to me and say, hey, is your chair for sale? Can I buy it? The chances of that are probably like one in a billion. Um, but that's what a lot of people do. They just magically hope that people just show up and buy. And that is not quite um, how, how that works there. Um, so you want to you, 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 you want to basically proactively go out there and find where your prospects are and start interacting with them. And then you want to start getting good quality content out there too. So not only do you want to see, uh, see where your prospects are now, start trying to find leads out there instead of waiting for, for them to come to you, start to help them, start to interact with, with them, start, start to give them amazing or free, free offers. Um, and then again, distribute a lot of content out there to try to grab more of the market too. You can also start reaching out to potential partners or places where you can advertise on or do white label type deals. Um, like, for instance, um, you know, uh, some, some of WebFire's tools like the backlink tool can help identify competitors and their traffic so sources for you to instantly reach out to them or their sources in order to make some kind of a pr proposal, whether it be, um, you know, trying to pay for an ad on their site, whether it be trying to partner with them, you know, as like an affiliate or whether it be trying to offer it as a white label type type deal. But I mean, you can reach out to lots of partners. Like, let's say you suck at the marketing side. You can reach out and say, hey, I have this cool offer or I have this. Um, and I see that you have like, um, you know, a lot of a lot of prospects that would probably be, be interested in this. Would you ever be interested in, the, in, in, in a white label type, type 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 deal where you can sell this under your own name? You know, I'll do all the, the work, all the support and everything. I'll the sales page up. I'll do all that stuff. It'll be hands free for you. You can even collect the money um, up front. Uh, and I just give this this cut. Is that something that you would be, be interested in? A lot of them would, would say, Hell yeah, because it's like a win-win because they get paid without having to do any real work. And a lot of places, especially the larger ones, if they already have a large market share, they don't have to do much uh, to get those sales because they already have control of those leads. They already have the, the list. They already have the market share. Uh, and sometimes they just lack a lot of good offers or a lot of good products. Um, so it, it, it can be a win-win to try to focus on that too. And of course, you want to at least try paid ads at some point point too. So if you're trying to proactively market stuff, you should at least look at paid ads and try it out, especially if you have, you know, the, the other stuff um, fixed up where you have a good offer there. And, you know, you, 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 you have like, uh, you know, a very good, 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 good offer or something to kind of get your foot, you know, in the door, you want to try the paid ads at some point just to see how that goes right there. Um, if not, you know, you're really wasting, um, you know, a lot of time and potentially holding yourself back from really growing your business. So with that, if you guys have any other questions, um, you can feel free to ask those now. I'll be happy to answer anything, whether it be related to uh, this call or anything else. And then um, while we do that, you can also go to the free Facebook group right here, Get Webfire dot com forward slash fb group if you're not a member of the free group just click on join sharon will approve you within like a minute uh, then you'll see a post um, up at the very top basically asking what you thought of today's call if you leave 
a comment within that post. We'll pick a random winner uh, in a few minutes right here. And I'll just change my screen for a second here as I show exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Do, do. Yeah, because one day Brian's not going to count all the people who don't post in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> and then Maybe you're I'll not going to win. And then you're going to cry. And we don't yeah. like you to cry, so post in the right place. All right. I'll tell you so, what, right. you have to go to law school to come up with logic like this. You can't just do this and be normal. Yep. Yeah. So right here, you'll see a post from uh, Sharon about an hour ago. We'll say 44 minutes ago as of right now asking what you thought of to, to today's call. Then you'll click on comment and you'll leave a comment um, right there and we'll pick a random person that left left a comment um, within a couple minutes right here. I'll do, I'll, I'll do the actual drawing live so you can see. Uh, so it will be completely random and make sure again it's within this post. Not uh, There's lots of other old posts down here, here and stuff. Try not to have them right there because it just makes it more hard um, to basically count and all that. So make sure it's in this post uh, right there. And we'll give you guys maybe a couple minutes to do that. Um, in the meantime, I'll see if you guys have any questions. Okay, so let me let me answer a, a couple questions because um, sure. I already wrote the answer, so I know the answers already. Uh, th so the one question was, Hey, if I have a if I'm putting a schema on a website for a client, right, and that website is not initially really keyword optimized, you know, what effect does that have? And the answer is, well, the page may show up somewhere in the search engines for some keywords. In particular, it can show up if they're searching the name of the business, because sometimes people go to Google. We probably all done this been like, you know, like the other day I had to call my dentist, right? But I put the dentist name in the into Google to find him because, of course, I didn't save it in my phone where it would be easily accessible, right? So people will search for the name of the business sometimes and be like, oh, you know, this, I'm, I know I've got to find this. And then they could see the information about the business, like, you know, the location, the, um, the hours that they're open, their phone number, all that stuff, because you use the schema markup to be able to add all that data um, into that and it might even be like oh I want to look them up and see if they have this kind of products and use the schema to get all that information and that multiple listing in the search engine so it it has valuable uh, it's value the schema is valuable even before you work to optimize the other web pages which of course you want to do related to that question was the question of hey so if I'm selling services to a local business to do SEO how do I justify like that they need work every month well that depends upon the scope of work you're going to do for them. But for any business, like, for example, my dentist, right? It, it, my dentist obviously wants to rank for dentist and then dentist Duluth, Georgia, and then dentist for, the, for all of the towns around us. And then he wants to rank for cosmetic dentist for all of the towns around us. And he wants to, to rank for, um, uh, you know, uh, um, crowns and for, you know, dentures or whatever, you know, you know, braces, right? I mean, you start going through the list of keywords that someone's going to want to rank for in any kind of local market. And it's all the nearby towns and cities, all the, the search terms that somebody would use geographically, like, you know, they might search for, you know, North Georgia dentist, for example, right? So you want to be able to rank for all of those and then all the related services and all the, well, you're not going to go into somebody and say, Hey, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll create all of this optimized content, add all these pages, clean up your website, do all of these things, uh, generate backlinks, make some videos, make some blog posts, and do this for for 50 or 100 keywords, and I'm going to do all that for 500 bucks, right? Well, you might say that, but you're insane if you do that. It's so much more valuable. What you're normally going to do, and the people are going to want you to do is, they want to pay you some fee up front, depending upon the scope of work, and then monthly, because you're going to continue to add on and improve what's going on, as well as to monitor the rankings, which you can do using um, the rank monitor inside of WebFire, because things are going to change, right? You're going to get somebody to number one, and guess what? The guy that you knocked out of number one is going to be back with, you know, trying to beat you you out, because like they were number one and they enjoyed getting all the free traffic. They're going to want to beat you out, so you have to, you know, pay attention. You get there, someone else is going to want to come and and take you down. So there's a lot of ongoing things that you can continue to do 
uh, you know, making videos, making blog posts, doing keyword con optimized content, etc., for somebody that will continue to expand their web presence, the amount of free traffic they get, the amount of leads they generate, the amount of sales they generate. It's really not like, oh, I'm going to go solve all of your problems, unless it's a really small, tiny business that doesn't have any money to invest, in which case shouldn't be going after them as a client anyway. So is that long enough for everyone to enter the contest? <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll give, give you guys maybe another 10 seconds. And Kimmy uh, says to pick number one because coincidentally, that's her number. All right. So it looks like we got all the questions answered on the chat there that Sean hasn't uh, just just answered here. So I'll give you guys maybe 10 more seconds. Then we'll pick oh, and, and uh, yeah. written in refresh your face, refresh your Facebook. Because Sharon whacked the people who prom who who um, uh, entered twice, okay, which we'll assume was accidental that they weren't trying to just cheat. Um, but it happens. Don't cheat. <laughs> One of All life's right. rules: don't quit, don't cheat. I All think Winston right. Churchill said that. He said, "Never, never, 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 never quit or cheat." Didn't know what he said. I think I remember <laughs> seeing that in the movie. All right, so. Uh, ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. All right, click refresh one more time. I make sure I'm in the right one. All right, just to see if there's anyone accidentally outside of it. Better not be after we made such a big deal out of it. All right. I think there's just just the one outside. That's that's okay. You posted a little bit ahead of time. Um, and somebody's typing. Yeah, I saw it. So whoever's typing, I'll give you like five seconds. It, right, Brian is awesome! Exclamation point! Exclamation yes. point! Exclamation point! That's perfect. <laughs> that's going to take them longer because they're deleting yeah. whatever they were going to write and there. Like that. Okay. All right. Now somebody else is going to type that. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Uh, so there's one outside of that. I'll count that one plus 36. So 37 in total with um, Alexandra. Well, call, call it 38. Let's just assume the person under Alexandra is oh, going to actually post. They just stopped. <laughs> okay. So 37 in total. Uh, and all of you except one had a post inside, so that's awesome. And what I say, I said 30, yeah, so 36. 36 plus one yeah. equals 37. Yep. Yeah. All right. So what is going to be that. number one? All right. Let's see. We'll click on generate 24. I was, I was off by a lot. <laughs> words fail me unusually. All right. So 24. So 37, 36, 35, 34. Wait, wait. Yeah, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. So and I said 24, right? You said 24. Yes, you did. All right. Um, so, Ove Goodmanson, if I'm saying, saying your name right. Uh, if this is if this looks like you and you graduated in 1975, um, congratulations! Uh, you are $100 richer, or you will be as soon as you post up your PayPal email in the chat box to Sharon. So make sure you post up your PayPal email right now to Sharon in 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 the chat box, and she'll PayPal you over $100 shortly this afternoon. So make sure um, to do that right now, so we have that info. So again, congratulations to Ove Goodmanson uh, for being this week's Marketing Wednesday web webinar winner. And as always, guys, we have these calls every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so make sure, sure to join us next week. And if you have any other questions or anything like that, um, feel free to let us know. You can always write support at webfire.com or use the support link um, 
inside of the members area in the top right, and we'll be happy to assist you uh, right there. And otherwise, have a great rest rest of the week, guys, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Again, every Wednesday at 2, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And if there's a topic of interest to you or, or anything else, again, feel free to check the prior training calls first, but then if you don't see anything there or you think uh, we should have some more training on a certain topic, let us know and we'll be happy to do so. So with that, guys, hope you have a great uh, rest of the week, and we'll talk to you later. Take care.